Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and I had a request, and I hope it's okay with Katie. Katie, please let me know if this is not okay with you, and I'll take the video down. But I had a request from someone when I pulled out Katie's little ephemera holder the other day. Could I please show how to do this? I don't know exactly how Katie did hers, but I can guess, maybe. I may not get it right, but I'll get it close. <laughs> But this is a little ephemera holder that Katie sent me, and she already had all these little pieces of ephemera cut out. These are mostly the freebies that we have over on our blog that you can get from her. She has graciously made these for everyone and is giving them to you for free. You do not have to pay anything for them. All you have to be is a subscriber. All you have to be is a subscriber to our YouTube channel. That's hard for me to say some days. Sub -su subscriber, <laughs> subscriber. I'm gonna glue that back down right there because it. I keep it in my little ephemera holder that we have over here, the one, the wood one that Benji made that we have on our in our store. I keep it in there, and sometimes I catch that little piece of lace. But we're gonna do our best to make one of these. Now, the best I could tell, she had cut this piece of paper at five and three quarter, no, at five and a quarter by eight. So it's eight inches by five and a quarter. Hers was about five and an eight, but I went ahead and made mine five and a quarter. So it would just be a little bit easier to measure. So I think that is the size that she cut it. So that's eight inches by five and a quarter. Now, I want this to be the outside of mine, <clears throat> and this actually looks right way up to me, but when you flip it over, let's see, see, that's right way, that looks like wrong way up, this one's turned this way and this one's turned that way, but I know it's right way because we've got that in there. So all we're going to do now is we're going to go and we are going to... Hold it right in the middle. Hopefully in the middle. All right. That looks pretty close. Pretty close. Okay. Now you can see this is a lot wider than hers. So what she did then was, now to make it a little bit easier, I'm just going to hold her little booklet up to mine like this. And I may not have as large of a pocket on the inside as she does, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. So I am going to fold mine right there. And it looks like it's an uh, inch and an eighth is what I'm folding it back. So an inch and an eighth. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my little scoreboard. This paper is a little bit thick, not much, but I think it would be easier to do it with a scoreboard. So one inch and one eighth is right there. Yep. And then we're going to flip it to this side. And excuse me if I clear my throat a ton. Today, <laughs> oh Lord, uh, make sure that's inch and eighth. Yes. Today I had found all of my cast iron pots and pans. And... I, well, I found them yesterday. I washed them up last night, let them dry real good overnight, and then today I decided that I would season them again. Well, silly me did not remember that I didn't have my, they don't have my uh, vent over my stove yet. So, as you can imagine, <laughs> I have that smoky smell all through my house now and I have coughed all day long <laughs> with that um, I turn my fans on in the bathroom and I open doors and things like that so I had just forgot all about not having a vent fan over my stove yet and I went ahead and stuck them in the oven and turned the oven on and when they started smoking of course they do then I started coughing. Okay, I'm going to put, all I did was punch the little pull in that, and I'm going to put a little bit of ink on the edges just so that it'll show up a little bit better. 
Now, if your paper is prone to crack, then you might need to go ahead and put a little something in the seam there. Mine has actually cracked a little bit, and normally it doesn't, but I didn't score it on both sides this time like I normally do. So I'm going to put a little piece of seam binding just on the inside. It won't be seen, but it'll just help protect it a little bit more. And if you have a thinner paper, you can go ahead and just double it up and put another paper on the inside. So I'm going to open this up, and right here in these seams, I'm just going to put a piece of washi. And it doesn't matter what washi, because this is not going to be seen. So I probably smell like a big old smokestack. If anybody comes up, they're going to wonder what's, what I have been smoking. But I don't figure anybody will come up except maybe my male lady. But it was kind of funny. I had put it in there. And then when it started smoking the house up, I was like, why in the world is it smoking my house up? It's never done that before. <laughs> well, dummy me. Before, I've always had a vent fan above my stove to suck all that mess out. This time I didn't. <laughs> Oh, one of these days my brain will get back to a, a sim similarity of normal. Norm one of these days my brain will get back to some type of normalcy, maybe. Then, then again, it might not. <clears throat> okay, now what she did is she took it to her sewing machine and she stitched all the way around. And just stitching this very edge right here so that she still got a good pocket. And then stitched her pocket down. You can glue your pocket down if you don't stitch. Then just go ahead and put glue here and here and glue it down and it will be fine. But I'm going to stitch mine really quick. Alright, there is our little booklet. Got a little pocket here and a pocket here. And like I said, if you want to make these pockets a little bit wider, I think hers are a tad bit wider than mine. Yeah, they look like they're about a quarter of an inch. You can go ahead and cut your paper at eight and a half and then fold it over. But that's that's plenty wide enough for me. Okay, it looks like she used three pages. One, two, three, and they're folded in the middle. And then she used, I think, this is serial liners is what she used. If you have that, use it. I don't have any more. Somebody had sent me a couple. I don't eat cereal, so... Um, somebody had sent me a couple and I've already used them but if you have cereal liners you can use that it doesn't matter it is a little cereal liners are a little bit stronger than vellum because they don't tear quite as easy because they do have that plastic coating on them but if you don't have cereal liners then you can use vellum like I am using now I cut my vellum it is cut at one inch wide and I think that's the same as hers. And then this is like 10, almost 10 and a half. So one inch wide by 10 and a half. And what I did, and I think what she did, best I could tell by how she put hers together, is I just laid my little sheet out here. And I'll tell you how, how big these are in a minute. I wrapped those around and then I just attached right there in the middle. So I've got... When I stitch this in, that will hold that down. So then I've got my little pockets. That I think that's the way she did hers. This one is done as well. So these pieces, and this is just some coffee dyed paper. These are five by five. I think hers may be that same size. Not exactly sure, but it's pretty close. So five by five. And then what I did is I cut these, and this is my vellum. I cut these at one inch wide and they're about 10 and a half somewhere around in that doesn't matter you can and that means you need to cut it the length of your vellum you know your vellum's eight and a half by 11 so cut it the length the long length of your vellum and then I just lay it down on here I lay all three pieces and she, she used three pieces per page so I just kind of lay my pieces down on so I can see about how far apart I'm going to make them. Something like that. Now, if you're real particular and you want to make sure that you get them the same space and 
that you get them perfectly straight, then go ahead and do all of your measuring. <laughs> I'm going to do mine just like this. Mine may be a little off, and that's okay if they are, but um, it doesn't matter to me. They're still going to hold my ephemera. Now, the first one that you're going to put down is going to go right at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is put my glue here. Now, I'm using Barely Arts because Barely Arts does not warp or it, it won't uh, make your vellum pucker like Art Glitter Glue will. Plus, we can ship this year-round. Now, put a tiny bead right at the bottom. Tiny, tiny bead. You don't want to close up your pocket. So, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is just a very little bead of glue. And then center it up, have about the same amount hanging off on both sides because that's what you're going to wrap around. So if I've got that centered there. So I need a little bit more on that end. That looks about right. And then I just press that down real well, and that way it goes goes down into the paper, and it doesn't warp it. Now, I may go ahead and put the top one on next, and then I'll just come back and put my middle one in there. <clears throat> now, I, once you get one on, you can kind of line them up like that. So I'm going to line it up. And then I'm just looking at this and making sure that I have just about the same amount all the way down through there. I just lift it up on one end and then just run my glue down through there pretty, pretty well. If I get it a little crooked, I don't worry too much about it. But like I said, some people have a, a lot of OCD and they can't stand to have it crooked. My husband, it would have drove him crazy. He would have had to made a jig for this. He was always making jigs for everything. He couldn't have stood it to be crooked. It bothered him. <laughs> but I'm not quite that particular. I just get it as straight as possible. And Now if I was making this for somebody else, yes, I would definitely take more time with it and make sure everything was straight. But I'm making this for me. So, okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. I am just lifting that up a tiny bit, making sure that my little tip is up under there, and then I'm just going to press that down. And see, my glue is there, even though you can see it up here because I put a little bit more glue than I normally do, but it'll, when it dries, you won't be able to see it at all. Now, you could stitch these if you wanted to. You could just stitch them on. That one is a little crooked, isn't it? I don't know if I can get it back up at this point. Um, you can definitely stitch them on. To me, stitching is a little bit tougher than just gluing it down. And then gluing it down holds just as well, so I don't worry too much. Now I flip it over, and then I just take these and fold over right at the end of the paper. And excuse my fingers, I've already got glue all over them because I've been making these. thought I would send some of these to my pals. So I've been making a few of them today. Okay. And then I go down here. This one's pretty simple because you're gonna, just going to make sure that it folds right at the bottom. Okay. Now, you don't want to pull these real tight because you're not going to be able to get a lot of stuff down in there. Now, you're going to make sure that you glue on the same side that you're glued on this side. So, I glued here. So, this is going to be the bottom. Now, if this doesn't look exactly straight, we can straighten it up. On this side, you want to put your glue on the vellum. That way, you can lay it down and kind of straighten it as you lay it down. You don't have to worry about that glue going everywhere. Okay, then you fold this one over. And again, you're going to put your glue on your vellum. And then I put a little strip of glue right there. 
that's where they're gonna fold together. Okay, so bring that one down like that. All right, there's your first one, glued together. When we stitch these in the center, you won't be able to see that. And if, even if you do, it's not gonna be very noticeable. All right, again, you're gonna put your glue on your vellum. Bring it over as straight as you can. Doesn't matter if it's a little off, just get it as straight as possible. It's still going to hold your ephemera if it's a little off. Okay, and then we're going to bring that one like that. I got so much glue on my finger that every time I rub it comes off, so. Alright. Put a little glue there and a little glue there. Now it takes very little of this Barely Arts to glue this down. Oops. So a small little bead goes a long way. All right, again, you're gonna glue right here. Whoops. Try not to go as crooked as I did, but it'd be all right. Okay. And then just fold that over. And you can straighten it as you fold it. All right, there we go. So we've got our little pieces on. And this one I have already folded. Now when you fold these, you're gonna find that there's a tiny bit of resistance with your vellum. Just use your bone folder. Just make sure that you're folding them where your pieces go across this way. So let's go ahead and fold this one. I think this one's dry enough that we can fold it. We may have to wait a little bit on that other one. So there's that one. That one would go inside that. And then we've got one more, and I don't know that this one is dry enough, but we're gonna go ahead and fold. It may, I may regret it, but we're gonna fold it. We, I can always glue it again if something comes unglued. I can even glue it after I get it in my booklet if I need to. All right, so there is our next page. Okay, I'm going to set that one in that one. Now, all of Katie's pages are perfectly even, so she probably trimmed hers, folded hers, and trimmed them off before she put them in her booklet. Mine are going to be a little bit uneven. I don't care about that. I didn't even think about uh, trimming them before I put these papers on, but if I trim them now, my papers are going to be messed up, so I'm not going to... Not going to do that. All right. It's going to be fine. It's still going to go in our booklet. Now, you do need to make sure that all of your little pockets are the same way. That all of your glue is down here on the bottom. And that you're not putting a pocket in upside down. Looks like all of mine are the same. So, I'm going to put them back together. And then this goes in here. And you just center it up like that. And I'm going to put a clip or two on here just to hold it while I get ready to punch my holes in there. Make sure your paper's the right way up. Make sure these are the right way up. If you want to, you could even put a little T up here. You can always er erase it. That way you won't get your pages in upside down, which I have done before and had to take it all apart. Okay, so now we'll clip it again. All right, there we go. Now let me get my needle and my string. We'll stitch this together. Okay, and I'm going to use my journal tool, even though this is a teeny tiny little book, because it presses it down in there and keeps that those pages all together down at the bottom. So I'm going to use my little journal tool here. Let's see. Let's see what she did. Yeah, she did the three-hole pamphlet stitch. That's what we're going to do. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it and centering it up. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to punch a little hole right here. 
and I'm just kind of keeping my finger there so that my tool doesn't go too far down in. You can do that if you're one of those that, that punches pretty deep. You can uh, keep your finger there, and then that way your little tool doesn't go down any further than your finger is. But sometimes I get a little bit too excited and I punch too hard. There we go. Okay, so see, you can use this tool for any size journal. It doesn't have to be a big one. You can use it for any size. You just move your little booklet back and forth. These are our journal tools that I designed and that Benji makes. He cuts those out on his laser cutter. So I love mine, love, love, love it. Okay, you're gonna go through the center, back up through the top. And then I go all the way down to the bottom. And then right back up through the center and just come up on the opposite side of that thread that goes down through there. So, well, I come up on the same side, but I'm just going to take my needle under. So see, I've got my tails on opposite sides of that string right there. That's what you want in order to tie this off and it'll make it really sturdy okay then I'll go ahead and cut my thread I don't cut my thread off of my spool until I get finished that way I don't waste and I make sure that I have enough okay you're gonna tie you can tie a double knot you can tie a square knot whatever you want to tie okay. and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off because I'm not gonna use that to put any kind of charms or anything on and then right here on my knot I'm gonna put one little drop of glue and that's gonna hold it so that that knot doesn't pull out now you're gonna need to leave it open and let that little dot of glue dry but that's okay we can do that and usually if you're using the wax thread it's not gonna pull out anyway so there is our little booklet now, of course, mine is going to flop open like this for a little while. Katie's flops open a little bit, but not much. But the reason being is you've got to break it in. You've got to get all of these little pages broke in. So what you need to do is go through and just fold them, press them down. Go to the next one, fold and press down, fold and press down. Go through like that a few times and it will, it will be fine, I promise you. And then I usually clip mine together just so that they dry. Everything dries kind of the way I need it to. So just clip it. Now we can do a little bit of decorating on the front of it. So I'm going to I'm going to do mine similar to hers. I'm going to put a little piece of paper here. I think I'll just tear my paper. I'm going to tear off a little piece. And this is just the opposite side of that. And let's see. Now I'm going to leave my lantern, so I'm not going to tear this side. Okay. Let's go ahead and ink this up. And then I need a little piece of lace that I can put on there. So we'll put that like that. She has a little piece of doily underneath. So we'll go ahead and get a little piece of doily. And I may just go ahead and use similar to what she did. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. We can cut this in half and just use half of it. Save the other piece for later. And that will go under there like that and then let's see let's find our doily and then I think in here she has this enjoy the sunshine if I'm not mistaken and if she if I don't have it in here I can always put something else I think that's it right th no that's imagine let's just do that one put by grace alone on there 
and then she has a little number tag, a little piece of book page. She's kind of layered this, so we might put another little layer there. And I can use just a piece of this to do that with. This is just some of the scrap that came off of that. Um, those page, inside pages that I used. So let's do this. I don't want to cover up my lantern, so I think I'm just going to go to that point right there. Yeah. And she put another little layer. She's the layer queen, I'm telling you. She, she does a lot of layering, and it looks so good. So let's see if we have another little piece of paper here that we can layer with. Here's a little piece of Tim Holtz paper here that's got the green in it. So we'll just layer with it. And I'll just glue that there. Okay, I'll go ahead and I gotta get something for my hubby's ring. It's too big for my finger and I I keep this string around it and the string always comes, comes unraveled and it drives me crazy. But I don't know what else to get to put under there. If any of you know, got any suggestions, let me know. I haven't had to do a ring sizing since I was in high school. <laughs> And, I, you know, you wore the, the guy's rings, and you, which I only wore one guy's ring, and that's my husband's. But um, you wore their ring, and you had to size it somehow. And, I'll, I mean, we did it just with string and whatever, but I know there's probably something better out there. Let's see. I need to tear that instead of cut it. Okay, that's going to be our little layered piece there. Put our little doily under here. So let's go ahead and start gluing some things down. Alright, before I stick that side down, I'm just going to glue my doily down. Just tuck it up under there. And then she has another little date right here and that uh, that looks like it was just handwritten but I can't write that pretty so I'll probably just use one of my little dates that I've stamped from Tim Holtz these are from the Tim Holtz fill notes then I have just gone through I save these little pieces of paper and I go through and stamp a few sometimes sometimes when I don't have anything else going on so we use a few of these if I can Put my hands on the ones I want to use. Okay, there's one that I can use. And one day I need to get all of these in a in some type of little container. I may put some of these in there. As you can see, I've got a whole parcel of them here, and it's harder to find them this way when you have to raffle through everything. And I may, there we go, there's one, but I don't want that one, I don't think. I think, I want that, but I don't want it in vellum. So let me keep looking and I'll come back in just a second. Okay, there is a number that's similar to that one. And this is, again, from the Tim Holtz Field Notes stamp. It's got all of these little numbers and things in there that you can use. And she kind of had hers tucked under like this, just a little bit. All right, we'll go ahead and put this on. And then I'm going to cut this one out since this is vellum. I'll just cut it a little bit. Oh, and someone had asked, would Brooklyn do a penguin to go with her snowman? And she is working on that now. 
so she will be doing a penguin video before long where she makes she shows you how to make a penguin she's just so excited she's beside herself now I could have been using barely arts on all of this it would have glued all of this down just fine I, I had just picked up the art glitter glue and didn't even think about it but it will glue the same way as art glitter glue does okay then she has a little piece of lace down through here she has another little piece of ephemera here but i don't want to cover my lantern so i think i'll just put a stamp here and a little piece of book page there and that way my little lantern won't be covered up let's see this is a little piece of book page that actually actually came from katie it's a very very old book all right, now let me get a stamp and put there. These are my large ephemera journals. As you can see, they're stuffed full. I, I definitely need a few more. Oh, I don't have my stamps in there. I don't know why I pulled that one out. My stamps are actually in this one. So, do we want a dark, darker stamp like that? No, I don't want that blue. And some of these I have saved off of mail that has come from you guys. I think I'll use that one. I always make sure I save all the stamps off of mail. There we go. We still have our little lantern showing there. And all I need to do is get a piece of lace now. Let me grab that. I'm just going to do a piece of this old vintage lace that I have here. And I'm just going to use my Barely Arts to glue it down. Barely Arts glues your lace and trims really well, too. Glues it pretty quick. I've noticed that it grabs a little bit quicker than an art glitter glue on your laces and trims, too. So that's always a plus. So there is our little ephemera holder. A little tiny ephemera holder. And you can just put all kinds of little goodies down in there like she has. Yeah. Go down in there all the way through. So there you go, guys. I hope that is what you was looking for. I hope Katie don't mind that I did one of these to show you guys. I don't I know that she won't. She's a sweetheart. But that is it. That is mine. This is Katie's. Of course, it is nice and full, all kinds of ephemera. But that is the two. And they're pretty similar to the same size. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell just so that you'll be notified when we put up new videos. We will talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.